Hey, Sarah, the metal theologian. All right, so I've been teasing for kind of a while here that I was going to redo a couple old videos. One was the Ironworks one, which I did, but the other was the Devil's Records one. So uh, I think we're going to do it tonight because uh, I'm kind of sick of talking about it. I'm kind of sick of like putting it off and like putting pressure on myself to try and like come up with something intelligent to say about every record. So I'm just going to show what I've got and just sort of play a little piece, some of my favorite ones, that sort of thing, and talk about what I remember. And there are probably going to be a couple in here that I just don't remember all that well. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Hopefully this will give you an overview of what kind of shit the Devil's Records label in uh, France was doing and why you should give a shit if you're interested in metal, you know? So I'm going to show these more or less in order, but right now we're listening to this one. Roz, I guess. You know it's V. With that fucking spaceship on the cover. And it really kind of sounds more like what they look like than uh, that spaceship, you know? It's like they've got the scruff. And in a way, I feel like that's sort of one of the defining characteristics of uh, the Devil's Label. I mean, there's a lot of great metal out of France, you know? They had some really cheesy bands like uh, Mistreated, whom I love, by the way. And they had, um, I mean, obviously, they had, like, black metal later on with the Black Legion and shit like that, but that doesn't even count. They had some bands like Blasphem that were like sort of hit and miss. And you know, they had some other ones on other labels too that were just bangers, like Oshbaum is pretty great. But um, the shit on uh, Devil's Records just kind of seems to be like consistently to have a little bit of extra grit and not necessarily like bad production or anything, just a little bit more like the way this guy sings. You know what I mean? So these are the ones that have tended to appeal to me of like, to the degree that I've collected French labels so much, Devils is pretty much the shit. And the next thing I gotta do is show you their logo. Which I hope is on this one. So this is the High Power album. Which is actually one of the ones I don't know as well as some of the others, but it's a really solid heavy metal record. I did just listen to it again not too long ago before uh, making this. And for an early release on the label, this is nothing to be ashamed of. So all of them have that Devil's Records logo on the uh, Side 2 label. And you know, not a huge budget indicated by the uh, other label either, you know. Which is great, I wouldn't have it any other way. I have no idea what kind of distribution this stuff got back in the day. I kind of get the impression that this stuff is... If these bands are American, or probably, even if they were German, these records would probably be more expensive. That doesn't necessarily mean they're cheap. That doesn't mean that they're common either, but they're... For the price point they're at, they seem to be uncommon enough that they're a little bit snoozed on. I'm trying not to sort of assume too much and overstate the case here. But, uh, you know, this isn't a label that I give people. And, and, you know, this is just a fucking great record. I and mean, look at that, that sums it up. I, um, I actually fire this one up because it totally deserves it, but I'm, I kind of want to do the next one. Because people do talk about this band once in a while, Atentarok, or Atentarok, whatever. The Gang de Seigneur. Get to hear a whole bunch of my shitty fucking French today, but as far as I'm concerned, me pronouncing the shit is part of the game. If I'm going to buy all this weird foreign shit... I'd say, hey, here's this fucking thing written in a Cyrillic alphabet that you probably don't even have on your keyboard, but you need to go looking for it. If I'm going to do that, then at least I can give you the entertainment of me trying to pronounce this shit, right? So yeah, solid record, man. And we're going to fire this one up for just a bit, because these guys, um... I always think of them as having a little bit more of, like, sort of an ACDC vibe. They really don't sound like ACDC at all. It's misleading to sort of leave it there. It's more that even though they definitely sound unapologetically metal, there's sort of a little bit of an old-style rock and roll sensibility underneath it that you can hear. But it I also think it would be overstating to say that these guys had a foot in the 70s, or like what you say for about bands for putting records out in... I don't know, this is all from the 80s, but, uh, shit, I don't know when this one came out. I want to say 82 or 83, but I think it's actually a little bit later than that. But relatively early, you know what I mean? These aren't, these didn't come out in, like, 95 when shit was over, or even, you know, 89. Shit, I'm 
used to be. So these guys just sort of have a rocky quality. You see, it's total metal sound, right? I always love it when they're named Arave too, by the way. Yeah, fucking look at those guys, man. And this cover, so like low budget, you know? But does the job. Yeah, and these are kind of one of my favorite bands in the label. I mean, I'm going to say that about a few of these because I really love a lot of these records. And some of the ones you probably are sick of hearing me talk about. There are probably a couple in here. But Raw is actually... I started with that one on purpose because this is the one that I feel like gets snoozed on by pretty much everyone, including me, even though it's in my... probably my top five on the label. Although it's hard to pick a top five on this label, which isn't bad given that they only had... Uh, I don't know, what, 20 releases or something? If you give a shit, you can count as I'm going through. I probably will. All right, so you've seen High Power, Raws, and Atonta Rock. You said it again, it's a little bit more mid-paced. It's definitely a metal sound, but it's sort of in that sort of rock and roll groove. It's not like a, you know, they're not doing like the speed metal thing or anything. Oh, I was gonna check the date. Last resort here, the fucking insert. It's funny because it's always cool to have the insert, right? But then people like, at least if you're me, you probably never read them. So yeah, I don't see a year on there, but let's check this one, man. This is the next one, the stack here. This is a sort of ledge, and this one's '84. So you know, that one would have been about the same time the Atlanta Rock one. <laughs> what another great band photo, man. So these guys do get talked about, and rightly, because Sword of Ledge is a great band. Oh, by the way, I fucked my finger up real bad, in case you're wondering. It's uh, it's one that, like, I'd like to use the thumbnail for the thing, but it's too gory. I'd kind of feel bad about doing that, y'all. So, uh, yeah, I sliced the tip of my finger off for the fucking mandolin. So the mandolin's in the garbage now. And actually, the most annoying part was I was doing a half onion. I had the safety, like, the thing that you hold to when you're using the mandolin so you don't do what I did. It was right next to me, ready to go, and I was going, this is a whole, like, big chunk. I'm just gonna, like, give it a couple scrapes, like, four slices, take it down to maybe a quarter so I can get a better grip on it with the thing, and I still, so it was right there, the safety equipment. I still did it to my fucking fingers, so. Yeah, I'm feeling like a genius tonight, let me tell you. Anyway, it'll heal. I actually did the same thing to, uh, this thumb about 20 years ago. And um, I didn't think it would grow all the way back because I really like, sliced the whole tip off. But, you know, you're not going to be able to see on video that I did that. So so I know what to expect with this one is kind of the point. So, And also I figure, like, cutting myself, even with a kitchen tool, I still cut myself with tools. So it still isn't quite as lame as, like, old man, like, hell shit. You know, I'm not, like, talking about my goiter and shit like that, you know. So anyway, Sword of Ledge is fantastic. Probably on the proggy end of the spectrum for this label. But if you're looking for, um, you know, prog metal, if you're looking for a bunch of Merciful Fates or something like that, I don't know if uh, Devils is really the label you want to be searching out. There's the logo again, by the way. Might as well fire it up. And this is just a great band anyway, Sword of Ledge. I guess it means spell. So... When I was getting into this shit, I was actually working with uh, the company I was working at in San Francisco. We had an intern from France who I kind of made friends with. Because, of course, some 20-year-old kid comes in. I'm like, hey, dude, let's go to fucking, you know, let these other dorks do their thing. And we'll, like, talk about something interesting. So, anyway, uh, I kind of learned all my heavy metal French from him. Like, sort of Yeah, I made up more full as I could have figured out myself. In fact... I didn't know it's sort of ledge, man. Awesome band. There's there are English versions of their records too, actually. There was this one, there's an earlier EP on Rave On, and then there was another LP that came out after this one. I don't remember what the label was that, that one came out on originally. Um but it was recently reissued by No Remorse. That was the one I didn't have actually. I had to get the one from uh, them, so. And I think they just did the French version, but I'm not sure. 
All right, here's another one that people know. This one, for some reason, seems to be the one that turns up in the U.S. the most often. I actually found this in the wild. I bought this at a shop in Austin. I wish I could remember the name of it, because if you're in Austin, you'd appreciate it, but it's just been too long. I'm pretty sure it's not there anymore anyway. Anyway, Vulcan, Rock and Roll Secure. And these guys are pretty motorheadish. you know what I mean? If there's a French band I'd compare them to, it'd probably be Marikage. Um... But I kind of like their songs more. They're a little bit punkier, and I think it shows in the songwriting. These guys feel a little bit... Um, these guys always feel a little bit sort of wooden to me, or a little bit... I don't want to say humorless, because I'm totally fine with humorless. But a little bit too humorless, like in the songwriting somehow. I don't know, man. Maybe I just haven't played this enough times. But this is one of those ones that I come back to every couple of years and want to like a lot more than I do. And if you want to, uh, well, I'll tell you, you fucking throw a pebble in the vinyl community and you'll hit a Volcano fan. I know that uh, Eric Bauer loves this band. And there's nothing not to like. Let's be clear. It's just one that I don't personally connect with quite, quite as much as some. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead to another one because I got a hype voodoo child. There's a reissue of this one not too, too long ago. This one, I think this might be the only one that has a keyboard on it. And you might think that's lame. <laughs> Unless you're merciful metal. In which case you're like, fucking, I'm taking out my wallet right now. But you didn't have to say any more than that. Shit, I'm losing all my covers. I have to do the post video uh, matching game again. Yeah, I know this one has some of the most like bonkers keyboards I've ever heard on a metal record, though. It really gives the thing character, just like, uh, you know, like that sort of batshit character that I always go nuts for in these sorts of metal records. So, yeah, you look at this cover. Obviously, it's a pretty stupid cover idea, right? It is satanic a little bit. It has that going for it, but it's not like super committed to it or anything like that, right? Voodoo Child stealing a Hendrix, and they were named from Hendrix, and not a good sign for a metal band, man. That makes it sound like you're gonna be fucking, like you think you're like Frank Marino or some shit like that, you know what I mean? This is fucking smokes, doesn't it? Anyway. There you go. I gotta tell you, I love the Lucifer song sung in French, too. Somehow it's like even twice as entertaining as Winston English, even though I understand a hell of a lot more of the English. Fucking love it, dude. How can you not love this shit? I don't know anything about this band. Those pictures are pretty much it. And you can probably go online and read about them somewhere, but you know something? This is just perfect the way it is. You know, this package is just, it's a unique record. There lot, you can't say that about every record, but this one is unique. As far as I know, it's their only one. And, uh, yeah, it's totally worth searching out if you ask me, man. This is a fucking gem. It's one of those labels where I was sort of collecting it. I mean, there were a couple great ones that I found early on that sort of piqued my curiosity, right? But after that, there'd be some that were, uh, it would always be a thrill to find one, but some would be like, oh my god. And others would just be like, well, that's cool, you know. This one's more like in the, well, that's cool camp. But actually, I'll pull out the other one, too, because they made two records on the label. This is a very good band with a German name for some reason, Der Kaiser. I don't know why they did that. I'm not sure I want to. Because I'd rather just feast my eyes on this fucking guy holding the sword right there and, uh, savor that awesomeness and then think about how funny it is that a French band gave themselves a German name you know <laughs> not that a lot of that land hasn't gone back and forth now I'm curious where they're from you know if they're from Strasbourg it's not as weird as if they're from you know anyway it's still pretty weird though I mean just because you can make an excuse doesn't mean it's fucking weird yeah I don't know my French geography well I'll do anything with that though but 
like usually when you describe someone singing as nasal, unless you qualified a lot, it tends to be negative. But this is where like it's perfect. Couldn't be better. So yeah, Dirk Kaiser, I think they sort of aspired to be sort of more of a prog metal band. They're definitely more sort of grandiose and big. But they never really got me so much with the, um, I mean, with the songwriting, I guess, you know? And again, I'm not mad at either of these records. I got one, and I liked, I got this one, and I liked it enough to get the other one, too. And, you know, I had to put a little effort into finding these, so. But I'm going to tell you something. Their Kaiser is a really good band. Not one of my top ones in the catalog, though. Now here's what you probably would snooze on, and this is one of the cheapest ones in the catalog, but I'm telling you, it's fucking great, dude. Square. We're gonna listen to this for a minute. Because this is really, this is like in the top five worst band names ever. I mean, Square, I think Bashful is worse. We've talked about that before. Um, fuck, there's another one that I'm forgetting. Tease, oh, Tease is really bad. I think Tease is probably worse than Square, although you're... Getting close. I'm going to stick this in here. Try to minimize this shit. You know, I'm kind of lazy, so. I don't want to have, like, a whole shit ton of cleanup. Plus, I make these videos in the middle of the night, so. You know, it's like one right now or something like that, so. All right, so check it out, man. If you thought that a band called Square was going to suck... I would have agreed with you if I hadn't heard this record. I think these guys did more too. Like, I want to say they're even still around or something. I found these guys somewhere online and they were doing something. Maybe they changed their name or something. Like, even those band photos aren't that great. You know what I mean? I mean, these middle ones here are solid, right? But this fucking guy, I mean, I'm fine with that fucking guy. Let's be honest here. But it's not as promising in the pictures department as, um... Uh, I don't know, these aren't the greatest pictures either. You know what I'm talking about. There are no mustaches. There's no fucking guy with glasses holding the sword like there was in Der Kaiser, okay? What's this, though? I suppose it's a little bit more sort of towards glam. But this is not glam at all. Pretty good hook right there, you know? Yeah, I think Square is kind of uh, under... Actually, I think Square is very underrated. It's kind of funny because the be the easier records... That, or the records that you come across more often... I don't know if they're actually easier to find or if you just happen to see them a little more often than others because the difference between seeing three copies in people's collections over 30 years and seeing eight copies, you know what I mean? I don't know if that really makes them common. Anyway, this is another one. This is probably one of the thrashiest bands. These guys in more zero, actually. Might as well pull that one out as well. These are probably the thrashiest ones on the label. So, more zero acceleration process. Uh, and most of their songs, well, some of their songs are in English, so. And then Killers. And that's a really promising cover, too, with that weird sort of inset and shit. Really good band photos on these guys, too. Now, both these records are really good, okay? I just don't find either of them to be as memorable. You know what I mean? Most of my favorite sort of thrash or speedy records will still have something that makes them distinctive, you know? The Rain and Blood, The Legacy, Bonded by Blood. There's something sort of unique to all of them. Spraying the Disease, I could add to that, too, you know? And it just occurred to me, those are all kind of huge bands, so maybe it's not fair if this is the first video of mine you're watching to hold a nobody band like Killers to that standard. But there are lots of bands that nobody's heard of that are that great. You just gotta find them. Anyway, man, Square is really fucking good. I don't see how many more I'm gonna to want to have to play before the end of this video, because I don't want to get too, too long either. All right, so, Steel Angel, not bad. 
Some people really like this record. This is probably the biggest, most grandiose one, like even more than Der Kaiser, you know? These guys were so dedicated they even sang in English. Which is kind of a bummer. I think this is the only record on the label where all the lyrics are actually in English. Um, and it doesn't take away, it's just sort of like, you know, it would have been fine in French too, you know what I'm saying? It's a weird kind of arty cover, you know, with that weird sort of model there. And that kind of represents it pretty well, you know, because it doesn't look like it's not metal. I know the bit mapping in the uh, font there, if you can see that in the camera. But that definitely gives a little bit of that charm, you know. Yeah, not the banger that some of these are, but still totally worth a listen. Like I'm saying, okay, so this record is pr maybe the weakest one I've shown so far. I'd probably give it about a 7 out of 10, okay? Like the other bad ones were 8s. Okay. Whereas by this, this is by contrast, so this is a straight ahead heavy metal one pretty much, but just like every song is great, man. This record just rocks all the way through. And they live up to that cover, man. ADX, Execution. I wonder if I should be saying ADX, actually, if I'm saying Ashbaum. But... but, um, when, through talking with Alan, I noticed that I say Celtic Frost, but Seareth Ungle, I realized that there is no point in trying to, like, be completely consistent, so fuck it. Dude, this is fucking square, man. All right, here's one I don't remember too well. It's one of the last ones I got. I do remember this. It's a hell of a lot better than what you'd expect a band like Epsilon to sound like. And I liked it more than Steel Angel. <laughs> and I tried less hard to like this one, so that ought to tell you something. Very cool record. This one's, for some reason, just one of the more difficult ones on the label to find. This one I don't think even has a poster in it. It has an insert. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about Epsilon. Nothing. This record's 85. That's cool. And I put it on for a minute, but I can't wait anymore. We've got to put on Struts on. Because this is probably my fucking favorite a lot. I mean, it's kind of close between this one and Voodoo Child. But this record is just fucking... It's just the best. Let me get the square record out of the way. I wouldn't say Stratson is a particularly good name for a band either. And you want to see something else that's lame? They're all called Strat. You see that? Like they're the Ramones. Maybe it's some joke in French that I don't get. One thing that I learned from my guy here is that the title of this record, Oof Metal, which sounds like a pretty ridiculous title, even though <laughs> cover art is clearly a 10 out of 10. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> cover art doesn't get better than that. All right. But, um, yeah, apparently that's like Parisian slang. Like, if you're French and you're watching this, maybe you know this, but, like, in Paris, there's, like, a thing where you take the words and turn them backwards. So that actually means foo metal or crazy metal. Which isn't really that great. I kind of like oof metal better, but, you know, it does seem kind of ridiculous, you know? about that groove? A little more grit on this one, too. I get the impression it was J.C. Strat's band, too. There are actually a couple of video clips of these guys on um, YouTube. And they're really obviously just like pose, like they're all playing and shit, but there's no mic and the guy's just sort of singing and it's like, yeah, okay. I think this is Fas à la Lune. Anyway, let's run for a minute. So this one's probably the glammiest of the lot. And this is the only one that I have here that actually isn't on the Devil's Label, and I'm sort of sneaking it in. But um, the Devil's Label actually did a reissue of this one, and this is the earlier pressing, which I think is more common, actually, on this Arabella label. 
And um, I'll tell you, man, if you bought this thing expecting a glam metal record, you'd be pretty bummed, I think. Yeah. Uh, Voix de Fe. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Voix de Fe, I assume, but I don't know. Anjou de Mon. It's a cool record, man. It has that sort of French charm to it, that weird sort of foreignness if you're, you know, an American or a native English speaker that kind of makes this shit interesting and special, frankly. I don't know what's up with that sticker being on there, but okay. It's kind of nice little uh, bit of retro appeal there. Really lousy back cover shot, like they're trying to be Loverboy or something. But uh, but this record smokes, man. It's a hard rocking record, it really is. And um, I'm trying to think of someone to compare it to. I'm going to try. But that's just because uh, I'm starting to worry too much about going far over a half hour. I'm trying to get it all in. Check it out. It's a good record. It's not the heaviest record on the label, but it's really cool. I forgot about this one. This one's in English, too. This is one of the last ones that I got, and I don't know it as well. But this is Stand Up For Rock and Roll Power by Jinx, and I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be on the cover. <laughs> but at least it looks like a real band. I should have played this one before making the video, because I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Except I do remember liking it. It's a really good record. Same deal with this one, man. I just don't really have anything to say about this one right now. I think these guys became um, Sultan Seed, who had a label at another French label, uh, French uh, on Dream Records, I believe. And um, that guy looks like he'd be in a band called Sultan Seed, I think. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. This record looks corny as fuck, but I really liked it. So uh, that's what I gotta say. And then there were a couple comps. And I think that's it. There's like, there are like one or two other records that came out on the label that I don't have. But other than that, we've gone through most of them. And hopefully just seeing some of these gives you an idea of, you know, the kind of shit we're talking about here. So this comp is really just, uh, I just got it because it's cool. Because it just bans it on the other ones. There's another one here that has some exclusive shit. But yeah, how about that, man? The new metals with Devil's Records. Welcome to hell. Bonjour l'enfer. Fucking love it, dude. I'm all in. These guys fucking having a go at it, man. As far as I'm concerned, dude, I would put this up there with any Metal Massacre record easily. This this probably has fewer like lame spots on it. This record than any single Metal Massacre record, except maybe Metal Massacre Five. I think is the one that I'm thinking of. But you know which one I'm talking. About. It's either five or six, sort of the boy vote and possessed on it, and future tense and some other shit. I can't remember if it's five or six. And so, and here's the other one. I saved the best cover for last. No, I'm just kidding. The Strat Zone's the best cover. It's a French connection. I guess that's something to do with some magazine or something, but there are a couple bands on here that are completely mysterious to me, like Digitals and Yugs. I don't know, man. And Vital. I guess All Fair was some sort of like heavy metal magazine or something like that, but uh, okay. I don't know anything about it. This could well be, for all I know, with the radio information all that too, this could be something that like some radio station like teamed up with them to do, like they picked the bands and the label did the records or something, I don't know. But it's an interesting record and this one's kind of cool not only because it's like fun to listen to, but also because it's this weird artifact and like these unknown bands, you know, and again, if you're in the U.S. or something like that, you see these sorts of things, you can just find a couple nobodies on a Metal Massacre comp, or you can find a lot of nobodies on a U.S. Metal comp, those fucking things suck, and they're easy to find, but something like this, you get to see the French guys doing the exact same thing, you know, so you sort of get that little bit of cultural exchange on top of everything else. Yeah, I love it, man. I really do love this shit. And, like, I hope that always comes through when I'm talking about this and joking about, like, other cultures and shit like that. Because I think what what other countries 
bring, give us back when they take metal and digest it, you know? You know, in a way, is the best of this is Japan, man. You take any style of music, you send it to Japan and let them sit on it for a couple of decades, and you're going to get something awesome back. You know, even styles of music I don't like, they do shit that's interesting, you know what I mean? Like Japanese jazz coming into its own in the 70s, though. And I actually say this as someone who's not a very big fan of Japanese metal. It's one of the few things Greeno and I don't totally, well, I guess there are a few things Greeno and I don't totally see eye to eye on, but he loves any Japanese metal. And I think most of the bands are just kind of subpar, but it's still interesting, you know what I mean? It's still, uh, the processing of it is still interesting. And when you've already given us bands like the Flower Traveling Band, I'm not going to mold too hard that, you know, one decade kind of passed you by a little bit, arguably, you know. So yeah, with France, even more so, you know, and especially because most of the bands sang in French, in a way, I think that sort of, I think it, I think it served to, to cause them to collectively sort of double down on the isolation, you know what I mean? Because like, any, it seems like any time these countries kind of start out with a certain built-in isolation because of language barrier or whatever, you know what I mean? And Germany broke out of that, you know? I mean, you sort of have to get to the next level to start digging up German bands if you're in the U.S., but, like, you're only going to that second level, but it's like you have to go down, like, a few more levels to get to the French stuff. And, like, this stuff isn't really that inaccessible, except for that language thing and that cultural thing. And so I guess what I'm trying to do is encourage you all to just embrace that wherever you can, because it's fucking fantastic. It adds so many layers to what this music is and what it can be, you know? So anyway, that's the Devil's Records review. We just talked about the whole catalog, I think, except for... 145 and maybe I think there's the Volcano record that I never took the trouble to search out and there's a 45 that's actually like a punk band or something I didn't give a shit about so other than that I've shown everything here so if you really want more information on one of these if you leave me a comment I'll listen to it and like report back so I don't be a dick about it but Strassel's the fucking best man thanks for watching <laughs>